If you want to find a good restaurant, check Yelp. If you want to find a good real estate agent, check their Google reviews. But if you want to find a good school, where should you go? Stick around to find out. Hi, my name is Mark McClinchy. Before I became a real estate agent, I was a school principal for over a decade, so the topic of school quality is a very familiar one. Every parent I have ever met wants to send their child to a good school. But what makes a good school? How we define and measure a good school is what I want to spend some time trying to unpack today. As much as people want to believe in pure meritocracy with objective measurements, how we casually refer to good schools and bad schools is also deeply ingrained with perception, privilege, racial bias, and socioeconomic status. So let's try to establish a baseline about what most people want in a good school. First and foremost, it is a place where kids are safe and feel a sense of belonging. And not just some kids, but all kids. It is a place with great teachers that are highly trained and highly skilled. They care about their students and love their job. In addition, a good school delivers a curriculum that provides all students with a solid foundation for the next level, while providing support for students that need remediation or acceleration. We also want the curriculum to help kids to think critically and creatively. We want to focus on core subjects, but we also want our kids to have opportunities in the arts, technology, sports, and clubs. It would be great if they could learn a second language, have access to mental health services, eat a healthy lunch every day, and so much more that we expect from schools. So if we can more or less agree that those are some of the ingredients of a good school, is it possible to distill every school down to a single number from one to 10? So a school that is rated an eight has most of these items, but a school that is rated a three has very few of those characteristics? Is that true? Absolutely not. It is impossible to fairly measure school safety, school culture, student learning, teacher quality, curriculum effectiveness, student engagement, etc., with a single number. But when you look up a house for sale on Zillow, Redfin, Compass, or Realtor.com, they all use a single number from zero to 10 that is provided by greatschools.org. When I look up the schools my kids have attended, they range from four to nine. And I can honestly say that the school rated a four was an excellent school, amazing teachers, quality curriculum, and a school my kids enjoyed attending. In addition, each of my kids experienced those schools in very different ways. They had different teachers, different classmates, and of course, each of my kids have different needs and interests. So to only look for schools above a seven, for example, is a flawed and potentially misguided exercise. I am not a psychometrician, nor do I completely know every detail of the methodology used by greatschools.org or any of the other online school rating systems like Niche or School Digger, but I do know the main data point for their entire rating system is based on state standardized test scores. Greatschools.org attempts to look beyond achievement scores by looking at student progress or growth. They also add in an equity rating for how well a school serves the academic development of disadvantaged student groups, but again, almost entirely based on standardized test scores in math and reading for grades three to eight. Most of the ratings are highly correlated with demographics. Affluent school districts have high scores and less affluent districts have low scores. I don't have a solution to how you build a better school rating system, but as a former educator, I'm incredibly skeptical of relying on a single number to determine which communities you might want to buy a home in. So if you're trying to figure out which schools might be the best fit for your children, here are a few suggestions. The first step is to check out the school district website. Look for information about the curriculum, school safety, and the student supports they offer. Check to see if they have any information specifically for prospective residents. Shout out to Fox Chapel School District for offering this type of information. After you check out the district website, go to the individual school website. You can often find messages from the principal, individual teacher pages, and perhaps copies of recent parent newsletters. You can learn about the school culture based on the information they share on their websites. While you might find a few online reviews left by parents or students, I have found most of these one-off reviews to be fairly negative and not an accurate reflection of the school. If you are able to get access to current parents or students, or even former parents and students, 
through a community Facebook group or through a personal connection like your real estate agent, it's a great opportunity to ask questions about their experiences, what they like, what they don't like, and changes they would like to see. My third suggestion is to ask for a tour of the school. You will likely find that some schools and principals will be very accommodating to this request, but many schools might not allow you this opportunity, which might be a sign of how accommodating they would be in the future. If you are able to tour the school, pay close attention to the walls, the displays, are they focused on holidays, rules, student work, and does it feel safe and welcoming for children? Inside the classrooms, how are the desks organized? What is on the board? Other clues and messages you can pick up about the priorities at that school. And my final recommendation is to set up a phone call or a meeting with the principal. Again, when you introduce yourself as a prospective parent considering a move to the area and the principal makes time to have a conversation with you, then that fact alone is a good sign. If the principal or the district does not allow this kind of meeting, it should probably make you wonder why. If you're able to meet with the principal, here is a list of questions you might want to ask. What distinguishes this school from other schools in the area? How do you support a student's strengths and weaknesses? What is your approach to dealing with behavioral issues? What are the qualities of your most successful teachers? What recent accomplishments are you proud of? What improvements would you like to see? If you are trying to find a good school for your children, I hope you have found this information useful and now you have tools and strategies that go beyond a single digit rating. Please reach out if you have additional questions about researching schools in a new area. And if you are considering a move to the Pittsburgh area, be sure to check out the rest of my channel with more videos about schools, neighborhoods, and communities. Thanks and have a great day.